this one, this one's a head scratcher. Hey guys, welcome to Throwback Thursday. Today I'm going to be talking about The Jacket, starring Adrian Brody, Kira Knightley, and Daniel Craig. This movie came out in 2005 and it was kind of marketed as a thriller, it was kind of a horror movie, I'm not quite sure what it was. Now I have to preface this video with a big spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. Spoiler alert. So let's break down what happened in this movie. So in this film, Adrian Brody plays a man named Jack Starks. The film opens with him being in the Gulf War in 1991. During a night mission, he's caught in an altercation with the young boy in which he gets shot in the head. <laughs> Flash forward to one year later. Brody is walking down the street in the snow and sees this truck in the middle of the road just stop. He stops to help and finds a little girl and a mother. The mother is drugged or passed out, I don't know. But the little girl asks him for help. He decides that he's going to help the little girl by fixing their truck. The little girl asks in return for his dog tags. The mom wakes up pissed. She tells Adrian Brody to leave the daughter alone. She gets in the truck. The daughter's playing, Mom, Mom, he helped us. No, we are leaving him in the snow. Cut to Brody being in a courtroom, being accused of murder of a police officer. Now, he can't remember anything from that day except for the mother and daughter who he met and fixed their truck. Problem is, he didn't get their name or any of their information. So now he's accused of murder and he gets put in an insane asylum. Justice. Then we meet a nurse played by Jennifer Jason Lee, who's treating a young boy inside of a home to help a family friend. The Iraq kid that shot Adrian Brody in the head and the little one that's sick is the same kid. What? Cut to Adrian Brody where he gets pumped full of drugs, put in a straitjacket, and stuck in a morgue drawer because some crazy doctor decided that that was therapy. Now he does this over a few sessions. He tries to resist a couple of times but they just get the better of him because it's an institution and they just have big muscly guys hold him down, put him in a straight jacket, drug him and shove him in a drawer. Until finally something crazy happens. Now cut to Adrian Brody being outside of a diner on Christmas Eve. We see Kira Knightley leaving this diner, who she works there I guess. She sees Jack all helpless, decides to stop, it's Christmas Eve, and she decides to help him. What a good Samaritan. Kira Knightley decides to take him home. Because what else do you do with a stranger on Christmas Eve, am I right? So we get to the apartment and Kira Knightley tells Adrian Brody this tragic, tragic story of how her and her mom had a big falling out and how her mom died smoking in bed. Don't smoke in bed, kids. While looking at Kira Knightley's belongings, he, Adrian Brody finds his dog tags with his name on them that he gave to the little girl. What is happening right now? Brody questions Kira Knightley and we find out it's 2007. After shouted interrogation, we find out Jack died on January 1st, 1993 from a head wound. Kira Knightley gets all upset and tells Jack to leave. And now Brody wakes up in the jacket in 1992. Daniel Craig plays another patient at the asylum. He talks to Brody and then we find out that he actually used to be put in the drawer before Brody was, but once he found out a way to control how to travel through time, that he, they, once the doctors discovered this, they decided to take him off the meds and take him out of the program. Now that Brody knows he can control it, he wants to go back in the drawer. Cause who wouldn't want to do that? So he causes a big scene in group therapy to get himself put back into the drawer. Brody gets put back in the drawer and ends back up in 2007. Oh my God. Back in 2007, skeptical Kira Knightley decides to help Adrian Brody by taking him to the hospital in which he's currently staying in and they visit it and talk to some of the doctors to find out what happened that caused Brody's death. They get an interview with Jennifer Jason Lee's character and find out that Jack actually helped her figure out how to stop the seizures the little boy was having, even though he didn't even know about the little boy. But we don't find out anything about how he died. Brody and Knightley have sex, which is of course what you do with the girl who's helping you find out how you died in the past because she's a little girl who helped whose truck you fixed in 1992 just before you were accused of murder and sent to an insane asylum in which you traveled to 2007 and oh my god so Jack disappears after they have sex because now he's back in 1992 and another flashback. Now we find out what happened that got Adrian Brody incriminated for murder. The police car pulled over the car. The driver that had picked up Adrian Brody shoots the police officer. Adrian Brody freaks out. Why did you shoot him? Why did you shoot him? He gets out of the car. The driver gets out, shoots Adrian Brody for being mad at him. 
He goes over, sh shoots the cop a couple more times. Bang, bang, bang. This cop is dead. The shooter wipes his fingerprints off of the gun and throws it over to where Adrian Brody was laying, now incriminating him as the cop killer. Now we go back to 2007 where Adrian Brody confronts the doctor who was in charge of the program where he's currently being held in a straitjacket in a morgue drawer. The doctor offers no help in telling Adrian Brody how he dies in 1993. Adrian Brody asks for Kira Knightley's address in 1992 so that he can find out more information. When he starts to get sick and disappears in the back of Kira Knightley's car, returning him back to 1992. In 1992, Adrian Brody convinces Jennifer Jason Lee that he had traveled through time. He tells her the method in which helps treat the boy and curing him from his constant seizures. He tells her that she uses electroshock therapy in very, very little bits. She says she would never do this. Then she goes home and tries it on the little boy. It works. Now the nurse is convinced that he's traveled through time, decides to help him, smuggles him out of the asylum, takes him to the home of which the mother and daughter are in 1992. He gives the mother a letter which tells the mother how she's going to die from smoking in bed. And then there's this awkward moment of Adrian Brody talking to the little girl who he's currently having sex with in the future. The nurse takes Adrian Brody back to the hospital. He gets out of the car, he slips, he falls, and he hits the back of his head on some ice, and that's how he dies. Why was everyone being so secretive about this? The staff puts him back in the jacket and back in the drawer before he dies, because that's standard medical procedure. Daniel Craig sees this and he's holding this green string, fiber, necklace, something. At the end of this movie, we see a, the driver of the car in a bar. And what's he holding? This green string necklace thingy that Daniel Craig had earlier. <sighs> now we make one final cut where Adrian Brody is outside of the diner. Again. Kieran Knightley. Again. Offers him a ride. Now in this scene, we can definitely tell things are much better. It's daylight, things look a lot happier. While driving, Kira Knightley gets a call from her mother. Turns out everything's great. Adrian Brody with his letter fixed the timeline and now everything is just dandy. The end. Now let me tell you what I expected from this movie before I saw it. Based on the poster, it was gonna be a horror or a thriller, some really dark stuff was gonna happen. Based on the trailer, it looked like some hallucination, fever dream, murder mystery. I don't know what the hell's going on, but it looks awesome. What I got from the movie was how to fix mistakes, past, present, how timelines interchange, I don't know, I was just confused. Time travel. Now there are several theories about what the end of the movie meant. Did Jack die? Was he alive in 2007? One theory is that Jack has been dead since the gunshot wound at the beginning of the movie. This whole thing was a dream? Theory two, Jack lived happily ever after in 2007. Third theory is that Jack died in the drawer and that 2007 was just a fleeting memory, happy dream, final moment. Now here's what I think happened. Is Daniel Craig the killer because of that green string necklace thingy? I have no idea, this movie was so confusing. But you hope for the best that he was alive in 2007, even though he was probably dead. Overall, I have to give this movie a solid B for the twists and turns alone. But one thing that it needed was more of the murder mystery. We needed to know who this guy was that shot the cop. Was it Daniel Craig? Was it Daniel Craig? Either way, you should definitely check out this movie and let me know what you think in the comments down below. And like always, please don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. We'll see you in the next one.